So what's it really like being a backend developer in 2025? From the outside, people imagine backend devs as these mysterious wizards working behind the scenes, pulling the levers that make websites run. But the reality is a mix of problem solving, firefighting, and drinking way too much coffee while staring at logs that don't make sense even after you paste them into Claude. Well, the core of backend work hasn't changed. You're building APIs, managing databases, and making sure the front end doesn't break when it asks for data. But right now, the tools and expectations are heavier than ever. Microservices, containers, and serverless functions are no longer buzzwords. They're the standard. Instead of one big code base, you're managing dozens of small ones, each with its own quirks. Sure, microservices sound great in theory, but then you're the one debugging why the payment service can't talk to the auth service, even though both are technically up. It's like being a digital plumber, constantly fixing leaks in an invisible pipe system. Then there's cloud computing. AWS, Azure, and GCP have gotten so massive that just knowing how to deploy something is practically a full-time job. AWS alone has over 200 services, and you're expected to at least pretend you know the difference between Fargate, Lambda, ECS, and EKS. The joke among backend devs is that most of your time is spent not writing code, but clicking through cloud dashboards trying to figure out what broke. And if you've ever woken up at 3 a.m. because your auto-scaling group failed, congratulations, you've unlocked true backend developer bingo. And let's not forget the favorite child of basically every tech company nowadays, AI, it has crept into the backend world. And it's not just about writing models anymore. AI is being baked into infrastructure. A lot of backend devs now spend time integrating large language models into their systems, whether it's for customer support chatbots or recommendation engines. Sounds exciting, right? Except that it also means handling unpredictable latency, token limits, and the occasional AI decided to hallucinate and recommend a toaster oven to someone shopping for car insurance. But maybe the most defining part of backend dev life in 2025 is security. Every company is terrified of being the next big headline for a data breach. So suddenly you're also a security engineer. You're expected to think about encryption, authentication, authorization, and API rate limiting constantly. And while front-end devs worry about button colors, you're stuck making sure hackers can't inject SQL into your login form. With ransomware, supply chain attacks, and malicious packages sneaking into open source libraries, it sometimes feels like you're defending a castle with a wooden sword. The day-to-day -day reality is meetings, JIRA tickets, and incident reports mixed with bursts of deep problem-solving. One moment you're designing a new feature to handle thousands of requests per second, and the next you're spending four hours chasing down a bug caused by a missing letter in a config file. It's equal parts exciting and frustrating. But here's the thing. Back-end devs are the reason the internet doesn't collapse. When you order food, stream a movie, or send money across the globe, it's back-end code that makes it all work. Nobody notices when it runs perfectly, but everyone notices when it breaks. And that's kind of the job, really. You're invisible until disaster strikes. And if you still want to become a backend dev after hearing me rant for three minutes straight, you should try Boot.dev, the sponsor of today's video. For me, it's the best way to learn backend because it not only has lessons in popular languages like Python, Go, TypeScript, and SQL, but also guided projects that mimic real-world work. You can learn CICD with GitHub Actions and Docker, or build file servers and CDNs with Amazon's S3 and CloudFront. Plus, boot.dev has a handy bear wizard, don't ask me why he's a bear wizard, who acts as your personal AI tutor, trained on every lesson. I've lost count of how many times I got stuck, and he instantly guided me to the solution. They've also added the training grounds, which lets you generate infinite custom challenges so you can practice as much as you need before moving forward. And the best part? All their courses are free to read and watch, but you'll need a membership to unlock the interactive features. Don't worry, fellow Codehead. I got you, homie! You can use my link in the description along with my code Codehead to get 25% off your first payment. Thank you for sitting through yet another tech rant, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow Codehead.